Let's talk anti design. We're diving deep into a style that has been catching the attention of graphic designers everywhere. First, we'll talk about what anti design is, the common features in anti design, and then we'll talk about when and how to use it. So make sure you stick around. And hey, if we're just meeting, I'm do that. And if you're new to Kittle, that's your easy to use design tool that works right in your browser. And some of the examples you see in this video were made in Kittle for you to use. So go ahead and sign up for free using the link below. Entire design refers to a traditional approach that challenges design's traditional and conventional norm. Full of experimental layouts and striking designs, it could cause some discomfort to our conformed mind. Try to remember every design rule you've ever learned. Now break all of them. That's anti-design. It's not the first disruptive art movement and it won't be the last. It is quite common, in fact. Art tends to walk on the opposite side of what is considered normal and ordinary. The characteristics of anti-design can vary since the approach encourages innovative and unconventional design choices. Here are some common characteristics of anti-design. Asymmetry. Anti-design often embraces asymmetrical layouts where elements are intentionally placed off-center or in unconventional arrangement. Overlaid in crowded text and imagery. Anti-design may feature text and imagery overlapping or densely packed together, creating a visually busy or chaotic effect. Clashing colors. Anti-design can incorporate bold and contrasting color combinations that challenge traditional color harmony. Lack of grid. Anti-design may reject the use of a grid system commonly employed in traditional design. This can lead to a more freeform and unpredictable layout. Mismatched element. Anti-design may intentionally combine disparate design elements or styles, creating unexpected juxtapositions that defy traditional design conventions. It's important to know that this characteristic are not the rules of anti-design. Anti-design is a mindset that encourages design to push the boundaries of what is considered aesthetically pleasing or usable. The visual traits of anti-design can evolve as individual designers bring their unique perspectives and interpretation. Anti-design came as a reaction to conformity in web design. As the digital environment was becoming more organized each day and we were witnessing the rise of UX simplicity. If you've been around this earth as least as long as me, you probably remember how the internet was in the 2000s. Messy, bright colors, way too many pop-up. A lot of the anti-design work that we see today brings us back to that awful web design period. But was it awful? If you think about it, anti-design came to make us remember things we hate now. But we once enjoyed and we thought it were cool. Another very important topic is accessibility. Design should work for all. And I'm not talking about personal styles and preferences. I'm saying that if your goal is to communicate, it should communicate properly. Anti-design is known for not caring about legibility, and that could be challenging for people with visual impairment. However, typography is not always meant to be read. Sometimes it doesn't need to. Sometimes typography can communicate without even being legible. It's interesting how the boundaries of typography are broken in anti-design and the traditional purpose of typography is totally ignored. Still, be careful not to use this style on inappropriate occasions. Anti-design, it's an experimental style. You can still communicate through anti-design, but not in a conventional way. A lot of people mistake anti-design with realism, and they are two different things. Well, I have two sisters, and they're older, almost 10 years of difference. I remember when I was a kid, I would look at my sisters and I would think, wow, they're so cool. Now I grew older and I'm cooler. I'm anti-design and my sisters are brutalism. Now, see, I say that as someone who's a huge fan of brutalism. Don't get me wrong. You guys remember back in 2019, 2020, when we had the brutalism revival? But we have to admit, brutalism is the old uncle who's gonna ask for their nephews to fix the Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's true. Just like anti-design, brutalism also could have a disregard for traditional design principles. But anti-design hold hands with what is considered ugly and sometimes even funny is a perfect design approach for the post-irony fan. Is it a smart choice to use anti-design as a brand statement? Why not? If your brand's identity and message aligns with the aesthetics and philosophy of anti-design, it could be an effective choice. For example, if your brand focuses on creativity and innovation, anti-design can help you communicate that. 
It is also perfect if you want to create a lasting impression. It could be a powerful tool to create unique and engaging experiences. But it's important to weigh the potential benefit against any potential drawback and ensure that it aligns with your project's needs. Remember, anti-design challenge is the status quo, pushing the boundaries of what is considered beautiful and usable in the digital world. Whether you choose to embrace anti-design or opt for alternative approaches, the key is to always prioritize the needs of your audience. Let us know in the comments what are your thoughts on anti-design and if you've ever experimented with this approach. Also, if you want to see more of anti-design, make sure to check out the tutorial on the channel. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more inspiring content, and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Keep designing outside the box. See you in the next video.